Welcome back. We are on problem number 13, right? Yeah, 13. 13 is what's on page 491. The price of a telephone was first increased by 10%, and then the new price was decreased by 25%. The final price was what price of the initial price? OK, so the price final is equal to the initial price, price initial. So the price of a telephone, the initial price was increased by 10%. So when you increase something by 10%, that's like by multiplying it by 1.1, right? Or you could say, you know, 1 plus 10%, or, you know, that's 1.1. And then it was decreased by 25%. Well, decreasing something by 25%, the same thing as multiplying by 0.75. Why is that? Because that's 1 minus 0.25, right? And so this sets up our relationship. And so we just have to do some math. What is 1.1, or what is 0.75 times 1.1? Well, 1 times 75, 0, 75, 5, 8, and how many points do we have at the decimal point? 1, 2, 3. So three points. So we have price final is equal to price initial times 0.825. And what do they say? The final price was what percent of the initial price? So that's it. The final price is 82.5% of the initial price. 82.5%. And the main thing is just to realize when you increase something by 10%, that's the equivalent of multiplying it by 1.1. And then when you decrease something by 25%, that's the same thing as multiplying it by 0.75. And why? Because it's 1 minus 0.25. You're decreasing it by 25%. And that is choice C. Next problem, number 14. This is what I do every day in my job. I work for a hedge fund, and I'm always doing percentages. So. Image, invert colors. Okay, fourteen. I do other things. Don't think I, you know, my my entire livelihood is based on just multiplying percentages. But a surprising fraction of it is. <laughs> anyway, all right. Problem number fourteen. When the number when the number w is multiplied by four, the result is the same as when w four is added to w. Okay, so it's saying when w is multiplied by four. So four w. It's the same thing as the result as when w when 4 is added to w. So it's the same thing as w plus 4. Fair enough. What is the value of 3w? 3w is equal to what? Well, subtract w from both sides of this equation. You get 3w equals 4. That might have been the fastest problem we had to do, right? We just solved it. 3w is equal to 4. Choice E. Problem 15. The lengths of the sides of a right triangle are consecutive, even integers. Fascinating. And the length of the shortest side is x. Looks like I'm going to have to draw a triangle in yellow. So they, it's a right triangle. It's a right triangle like that. That looks like a right triangle to me. And they say they're consecutive, even integers. and the shortest side is x. So let's say this is x. Consecutive even integers. So the next even integer is going to be x plus 2. And then the last integer, the, or the, the, is going to be the hypotenuse, the next one, right? And this is going to have to be x plus 4. And they want to know what is x, or, wh or, or what equation can be used to solve for x. Well, this is Pythagorean theorem. So we just say this squared plus this squared is equal to this squared. So x squared plus x plus 2 squared is equal to x plus 4 squared. Now let me see if, there any of, if this is already there in any of the choices. x squared plus x plus 2 squared is equal to x plus 4 squared. Yeah, well, it's already there. We didn't have to do any simplifying. This is choice C. And we are done. These problems are extremely fast to do. And the important realization is that they're consecutive even integers, right? So you add 2 each time. And you just use Pythagorean theorem. Next problem. Problem 16. If x is an integer greater than 1, so x is an integer greater than 1, and if 
y is equal to x plus 1 over x. Which of the following must be true? Oh, I like these. OK, I'll write all the choices down. 2 and 3. OK, this first one says y does not equal x. The second one says y is an integer, y integer. The last one says xy is greater than x squared. Well, let's think about it. Do we know? Well, first of all, do we know that y is an integer? Well, no, not really. I mean, we could, I can immediately find an x that, if x is equal to 2, x equals 2, then y is what? It's 2 plus 1 half. It's equal to 2 and 1 half. So we know y is in an integer. If x is an integer, y doesn't have to be 1. So we know this is definitely not the case. Now, do we know for a fact that y does not equal x? Well, let's, let's play with this equation to see if we can get it to a form that makes a little bit more sense to us. So we know that x is greater than 1, or that x does not equal 0. And obviously, this would be undefined if x equals 0. So let's multiply both sides of this equation by x. So we get xy is equal to x squared plus 1, right? This all of a sudden looks fascinating. xy is equal to x squared plus 1. So do we know immediately that xy is greater than x squared? Well, sure. No matter what x squared is, x square, xy is going to be that number plus 1, right? And this term is always going to be positive, right? This is always going to be positive. There's no way you can get x squared plus 1 if you're not dealing with imaginary numbers. That's going to be negative. So this whole thing is going to be positive. x is positive. So if this is positive, x is positive. We also know that y is going to be positive. I don't know if that helps, but anyway. But we know that x, x y is always 1 more than x squared. So we do know that x, y is greater than x squared. So this is true. Now let's see if we can show that y has to not equal x. Well, let's think about it. No matter what x is, no matter what x is, y of x is going to be equal to some uh, y is going to be equal to some fraction larger than x. And as you get really, really, really large x's, that fraction, the difference is going to get smaller, right? Like you could try it on a calculator. If you put in, you know, it's if x is five, then y is five and one fifth. If x is five hundred, then y is five hundred and 1 five hundredth. But no matter what number you put in that's you know a larger number than 1, you're going to get a little bit left over. y is going to be just that little bit fraction larger than x. So we know for a fact that y is going to be not equal to x. And so this is also true. So choices 1 and 3. And that is choice d. And we are done this section, because there's only 16 problems, as far as I can tell. Yep, only 16 problems. Actually, I think we're done all the math sections in this uh, test number two in the book. I will see you in the next.